Hi everyone, I'm here today with some of my favorite chemicals, acid-base indicators. Acid-base indicators are quite simply miracles of chemistry. They're molecules that change color depending on the pH of the solution that they're in. And we use them in acid-base titrations all the time because we need to know when we're getting to the end point or an appropriate pH that we're looking for. But did you ever wonder how acid-base indicators work? How do they change color from one to the other depending on what solution they're in? Well, I'm glad you asked because that's the focus of this episode. Right in this little bunch here, I've got six acid-base indicators and I wanna show you what colors they make in acid and base solution. I have some colorful indicators that we can look at. And at first I wanna mention my setup. My setup is a bunch of flasks. And in the first and third columns, I have some dilute hydrochloric acid. So it's fairly acidic. And in the second and fourth columns, I have some sodium hydroxide solution, dilute. Uh, but it's fairly basic. We're going to start with phenothaline, which in acidic solution is clear, but in basic solution it's nice and that bright pink color. So that's pretty cool. Bromothymol blue, you'll see when it goes into the acidic solution, is yellow, but in the basic solution that is blue. Let's just mix them up just a tiny bit. Methyl orange is more reddish in acidic solution and more yellowish in basic solution. I have here some malachite green. By the way, acid-base indicators have some of the best chemical names in the world. You can see that in acidic solution and this in basic solution. So let's give those a stir so we can see them in all their glory. Phenol red, which is that color in acidic solution, and that cool pink color in basic solution. I also brought out some universal indicator, which is actually a mixture of indicators, and we'll do this in the last one. Get some of that. And you can see it's the same chemical going in, but in under different conditions, the colors actually change depending on the pH, whether they're in the solutions that have lots of protons floating around or in the two solutions that have very little protons floating around but a lot of OHs floating around. So each of these indicators gave one color in fairly strong acidic solution and another color in strongly basic solution. But how do they do that? Turns out it's all about the structure of the molecules and the electrons in it. Let's get into it. Let's start with a common acid-base indicator that's familiar to most chemists, phenothaline, right there. And we know that phenothaline goes from clear or colorless in uh, acidic or neutral solutions, and it turns pink when the solution becomes more basic. It has a pKa of around 8.3. And so what happens is in acidic solution where there's plenty of protons, we have protons attached to the molecule and we get a structure that looks like this. It's really great with like these benzene rings and then this cool five-membered ring right in here. As the solution becomes more basic and there's less hydrogens available, a lot of the hydrogens pop off and the whole structure shifts, and including these double bonds that shift it. And this area of the molecule looks much different from this area of the molecule. And also this little ring got destroyed and now the carbon and the two oxygens are just off by themselves over here. What this does is it allows this molecule to interact with light, photons of light, and absorb and reflect different frequencies. And so we see the color pink, whereas over here we just see a colorless uh, sample. A similar thing happens with bromothymol blue, another great acid-base indicator, which goes from yellow in acidic solutions and to blue in basic solutions. And you can see some similarities between the two structures. Here we have extra protons floating around, so we have a lot of OHs on the molecule, and again, another five-membered ring here. 
Then when the protons become more scarce, the whole molecule shifts and we don't see those, all of those, this one actually in particular, loses its proton. And then again, the bonding changes, similar to phenolphthalein in this section of the molecule. And so we get something that's not necessarily a benzene ring, it's, but it does have some resonance and some different locations of the double bond. This again allows it to absorb and reflect different photons of light, and so we get a blue color instead of a yellow color. Let's talk some theory. Acid-base indicators have to be weak acids or weak bases in order to be acid-base indicators. In this case, we'll use a weak acid, H indicator, that's just short for whatever the complex molecule is. You put it in water and it's gonna make a little bit of its conjugate base and a little bit of hydronium ion, okay? And because it's a weak acid, it has an equilibrium constant, we'll call it K indicator, and that's gonna be equivalent to the concentrations of these two over the concentrations of these two. Also, because it's a weak acid, um, there are situations where it creates a buffer system with itself, and that is, and that's why we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, where the pH equals pKa plus the log of the indicator uh, anion over the acid. At the beginning of a titration, you'll probably have one or the other of these species, uh, either the all the conjugate base or the acid. And so the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation doesn't really work there because you don't have significant quantities of both. So as you move along in a titration, however, one of these is gonna start getting converted into the other one. For example, the protonated form might be starting to convert into the deprotonated form. And eventually you get this situation where you're gonna have some of both. Okay, and you'll have a little buffer system here with the indicator. And in fact, when you're halfway through converting this into this, the quantities of each of these is going to be the same. And so they will essentially cancel out. We'll have the log of one, which is zero, and we'll have a situation where the pH at that moment is equal to the pKa of the indicator. And that occurs about halfway through the color change, where one is being converted into the other one. Ideally, what you want to do is choose an indicator whose pKa is as close as possible to the pH at your end point, because then you'll get that quick color change um, when the pH is changing rapidly. Let's take a look at methyl orange, which has a pKa of around 3.8. And under a pH of around three or so, there's extra protons, so we've got this proton, and it's the red form. Most of the molecule stays the same or very consistent, uh, whereas in a above, say, a pH of around 4.8, we get the proton coming off, the whole molecule shift. Now, it's not as obvious in here because it looks like from the drawing, the bonds are the same, but they do shift a little bit in their density and their confinement. And so we end up with a slightly different color that's being absorbed and reflected by these electrons as opposed to these electrons. And that happens right around a pH of 3.8. And now for one more very special acid-base indicator, turmeric. I raided my spice drawer and got a little turmeric in here. And I put it in, into this flask with some water and a little bit of alcohol to help it dissolve. Um, but that's the color that I'm getting right now. And here it is, my turmeric solution in acid solution, dilute hydrochloric acid, and some dilute sodium hydroxide. And you can check out definite color change between the two. Here's a nice light yellow, and here is a nice bright orange color. So literally, when you see that color change happening, you're actually seeing evidence of electrons shifting inside the molecule and reflecting different colors. If that doesn't improve your day, I don't know what will.